this double act, it's a bit like Cagney and Lacey, but um, I suppose just to stress that uh, what I'm going to talk about, Charlotte has been also involved in the included research that I'm referring to, and we work together on the Tempest research. And I'd, I'd like as well to thank Pierre for giving us the opportunity, I suppose, to open up a different concept or a different aspect of sustainability to you as an audience today. Uh, coming through a lot of the talks to date has been the notion of change and the ability to change, to change mindsets, to change the way people act and to change the way people behave. And I suppose the idea of included is the recognition of education as a transformative agent. I will also talk about it as being capable of reproducing inequalities. But in this instance, we're going to focus on the notion of education as having the ability to transform. And the Included project to which we refer took place between 2006 and 2011. It actually just ended in December of last year. It was the biggest single piece of education research that had been conducted by the EU under Framework 6. And one of the interesting aspects of the research was that it fed directly back into policy. So as each stage of the research was concluded, then it was taken to meetings of the European Parliament where it was presented and managed to impact on policy formation. So much research just sits there and dies. It's the idea of exploring actions which support inclusion in education. And it had two specific, um, I suppose, concepts. And the first one is quite broad, and the second one was much narrower. And the first one was, can we achieve the Lisbon objective of Europe becoming the most competitive and dynamic knowledge-based society? Very, very big concept. If we continue to exclude socially and educationally many EU citizens and their communities. So that was the first concept that the 14 countries involved in this particular project had to look at. And more specifically then, can we identify successful actions that contribute to school success and social inclusion? I think it's important to stress the research was around children in the school going age between six and 16, which is the compulsory school going age uh, across Europe. And there was a specific focus on a number of vulnerable groups, youths, migrants, uh, groups such as cultural groups such as Roma, women and people with disabilities. So if we accept that education matters and it makes a difference, can we also accept that success or failure in education impacts on all areas of society, such as employment, housing, health, participation in public spaces, particularly for the vulnerable groups in society that were being looked at. And if it can transform, can it benefit public organisations, civic organisations such as schools, government, policy makers, etc., etc. So with the rationale that the school is a social entity acting as a reproductive agent, but also as a transformative agent, as I said, the findings were fed directly back into EU policy. The research was conducted by using critical communicative theory. And the idea there was that voices which are traditionally silenced in research, such as the vulnerable groups that I've highlighted, would have an opportunity to have their voices heard in the research. And that from the outset, we would look at it as having the ability to transform. Before I go on to the strategies that I've highlighted here, there are one or two other strategies that emerged in the early stages of the research that I just want to mention. And the first one was around the language of acquisition in terms of learning. So if we look at vulnerable groups, particularly migrant groups, we assume that the first thing they must do is acquire our language or whatever the 
languages that they're coming into, the particular country that they're coming into. And straight away the research highlighted that migrant groups must be given the opportunity to learn in their first language, as well as the acquisition of a second language. And the second thing, and this can you, you can imagine when we presented it uh, as an ongoing piece of research in Ireland, was that schools by their very nature are cultural and they're cultural hotbeds. So diversity recognition was absolutely essential to education. And the research cited was OECD research from 2005, which said, greater diversity leads to greater success. And in the area of religion, what the research highlighted was that the secularization of the space allows diverse religious traditions and identities to occur and to occur naturally. Now in Ireland, that raised several ha hackles, as you can imagine. Moving on to the later findings, heterogeneous ability classrooms where all of the resources were put into the same classroom at the same time, rather than excluding people and taking them out for language or special education or excluding Roma groups, indeed as we did with traveler education here in Ireland for many years. It was proven that the greatest level of success occurs in heterogeneous uh, ability classrooms. And the second one was extending the school year and not looking at the traditional concept of a school which begins at nine and ends at four. Now our unions may have something to say about that. Um, the second big area was family and community engagement. And looking at the levels and types of family engagement. And they were identified under five particular headings but only three of those headings were found to be successful. Where you allowed parents to be part of the evaluation of work, where you allowed them to participate in decision-making and also brought them on board as part of the education process, then the likelihood of success was increased. In terms of the community, and this makes sense in relation to everything that's being said here today, that promoting cultural and educational interactions between students and other social agents, and particularly family members, enhances students' achievements. So the school is not an island. The school doesn't exist alone. That the school also needs to engage with the public, and the public needs to engage with the school. And where you go down the road of what we refer to as saris, sambas and samosas, that that type of engagement, that type of cultural engagement doesn't work. It has to be far greater. The policies developed should, as I said, feed directly back into the schools, but the voices of those who are normally marginalised, including parents and including the, the uh, greater community, that they should have a voice in formulating the policies of what happened in education. Okay? So greater academic su success, surprise, surprise, happens in that type of classroom or that model of classroom. And indeed the opposite happens where we don't do that. Research indicates that separation into special programs and schools for students from ethnic minorities, second language, Roma, etc., etc., increases dropout levels and levels of racism. So there I leave you. I'm sorry it was a whistle stop tour, but if there are any questions, perhaps you can ask them later of either Charlotte or myself. Thank you very much.